What do you personally feel about the Bible? Well, I have a lot of love and respect for the Bible, in fact, because in the first century, the so-called books of the Bible, some of them were, were available to me, particularly the books of the prophets in the old, what is now called the Old Testament. Back then, it wasn't called that, but it was the books of the prophets that were available to us to study. And they taught me a lot about God. They taught me a lot about love, in fact. And I saw the errors in them, but I also saw a lot of the truths in them. And I established my connection with God through understanding the different things that were written about love and truth in those books. So I have a lot of affection for the Bible. That being said, it is definitely not God's word. It is the word of men and spirits who have channeled to men information about what they believed at the time was God. And uh, what I've discovered is that many of those beliefs were wrong. Many of those beliefs were inaccurate and many of them completely false, in fact, uh, and, and also quite damaging to believe about God. What I also know about my own life is that I, have a, I remember my life and the first four books of the New Testament do not give an accurate record of my life. It's very, very hard for books written in the way in which these books were written to give any type of accurate record of one event, let alone an entire life of 34 years or so. Mm -hmm. You imagine, and this is why the Bible misses out a lot of my life, because it, it, it's impossible to contain you know, in, in books, a complete record of, an entire, of one person's life, and particularly with the amount that I talk, with one, <laughs> with one person's sayings of truth, you know, that they shared with others. So, you know, the Bible itself with regard to our life is very inaccurate in a lot of aspects. It's also inaccurate in a lot of the other parts of the New Testament in terms of its belief systems and so forth that it perpetrates. And, and encourages. So, so there are beautiful things in the Bible, like there are in many holy books, but there also is a lot of error out of harmony with ethics and love and truth in the Bible, as there is with most holy books. So I have a personal respect for the Bible, mostly because of the personal things that I gained from the Bible in the first century that helped me develop my relationship with God. But if I had grown up with the Koran, rather than the Bible, I probably would feel the same about the Koran. There are a lot of things in the Koran that would help a person come to some kind of acknowledgement of different truths and untruths about God as well. And so, you know, I feel quite strongly that there are a lot of material written in most of the holy books that are present on the planet that a person could study and start to understand if they use truth and love as a basis for all decision making. Mm -hmm. I feel the big problem for most books is that most people reading them don't use dis love and truth as a, as a decision-making tool. What they do instead is they either accept or reject the book as God's word before they begin, mm -hmm. and then as a result of that, accept a lot of untruth in the book if they accept the book. A person who truly knows God and understands God and understands love and truth will not do that. What they will do is they'll enter every book, whatever the book is, with an open mind and they will, discuss, they will look at the book with an open heart and they will ask themselves the question, is this in harmony with love? Is this in harmony with truth? Is this logical? Is this ethical? Does this make sense? And once they go through that process, they'll be able to discard the things that are untrue and accept the things that are true quite readily and easily in one book, just like they would be reading a secular book that some author had written. If we use the same process with a secular book as we did with the Bible, it would be a terrible state because most secular books contain error as well as truth. And if we just assumed it all to be truth, like people do with the Bible, then we'd have all sorts of problems, wouldn't we? So what I'm suggesting is we do the same with the book, the Bible, as we do with the book that is secular. And that is we analyze it from the point of view or perspective of love and truth of what is ethical and what is, what is logical. When we do that, we see very, very clearly what's out of harmony generally. And so a person doing that with the Bible would see very clearly what's out of harmony with any logic or truth and love. And they'd see very clearly what's in harmony. And if they did the same with the Koran and they did the same with every other book they read, 
as they often do with every other book other than the holy books, um, then we'd be in a far better state as humanity and, and, and in religion. The reason why we don't do it, though, is because many people assume that it is the Bible before they begin, that it is God's word before they begin. The Koran is God's word before I begin. When you make this invalid assumption, you are consigning yourself to accepting lots of error along with some truths. And it's not a very healthy or logical way to address new truth.